This is going to be a look at three plays from JPP and the Ravens' 10-9 win over the Broncos in Week 13. He showed up big in only 22 snaps. The crazy thing is the week before against Jacksonville, he had played 36 snaps. Didn't register a single statistical impact. I think he did have one really nice play against Jacksonville on a run play to his side. He wasn't involved with the tackle. He just set it inside. The Ravens in our nickel defense this week, we were wrong-arming certain things. I thought JPP did that one time as well, but I couldn't find that. If anybody knows where it is, let me know, and I'll post it up on Twitter. But in any case, 22 snaps this week. Here you go. Three, ta three solo tackles, four totals, one tackle for loss. And again, I thought he did a great job one time wrong-arming. Compare this game to two other games that he's had this year. Jacksonville last week, like I said, 36 snaps, not a single tackle, quarterback hit or anything. And then Tampa Bay in week eight, 50 snaps. And again, nothing, no statistical you know, registry at all. I feel like this is the third pretty solid game he's played for us this year, maybe the fourth. Certainly he played quite well against Buffalo the first week. And then Cincinnati the next week had a sack. So let's look at the three plays. We're going to give you the all 22 angle first, generally, and then the end zone angle. This one is a first and 10, first possession of the third quarter. And the Broncos are in 13 personnel. They had called timeout right before this play. It's a really weird configuration. It's not bunch, but it is two tight ends to the right and a tightly aligned receiver. And you can see that Chuck Clark, I'm sorry, Marlon Humphrey and Patrick Queen are trying to figure out how we should align, you know, who should guard one of the tight ends. But look, you've got two tight ends next to each other and a tightly aligned receiver out here. Really weird configuration. JPP just basically dominates this right tackle. Pushes him in the backfield. No, no vertical push by that tackle at all against JPP. You can see JPP has established a new line of scrimmage. Gets his hands out. Once Roquan Smith comes on an inside angle, the tackle tries to peel off. And it was embarrassing for him, JPP and Marcus Peters making the play. You get the end zone angle, you'll see how spectacular this is. There's JPP uh, stacked up there with Marlon Humphrey and Patrick Queen who are communicating. Right tackle steps to him, doesn't get really any help from the tight end. JPP is controlling him and has already pushed him in the backfield by the time Roquan Smith shows up. I think Roquan Smith definitely impacted, but pretty physically dominant play if you ask me. Tackle looked like somebody hit him with a shotgun. Just knocked him in the backfield. Great play. Again, first possession of the third quarter. All right, this next one is the second possession of the third quarter, and we're in our base defense. There's going to be motion coming at JPP. And again, he's, he thinks he's getting an outside run look. We're playing max coverage here. This is a tackle in open space on an NFL wide receiver. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't understand that Sutton... And certain guys were out, but this is max coverage. We're only rushing three. So kind of weird. You have both edge rushers, Bowser and JPP, dropping out in the flat. So I feel like for this to be the call and it to be a play-action pass, the Ravens had to know something. in term They had to recognize something in terms of the run-pass ratio with maybe that formation. But in any case, credit JPP. Reads it as run initially and then realizes the tight end's trying to get out. I mean, he really hung up that tight end. That's, that's how you do it, trying to get hands on a tight end and you know, impede his release so that he can't get out there and threaten your linebackers on the over concept. I mean, he completely held him up. Physical football. Two physical plays from him, using his hands very well. If he can give us this in some of the bigger games that, sh that we'll have down the stretch here, that would be amazing. Against our base defense. Three down linemen and the two edge rushers or outside linebackers is JPP and Bowser. Pretty talented front of guys that we got up there. See him? I mean, he's just hanging on to the tight end. And then once they bring this back here to, I think it's Latavius Murray, settles his feet perfectly, makes the tackle. Pretty fundamental on these first two plays, I would say. All right, third and last play. This is our nickel defense, and he's going to communicate something. Actually, I think this is our base. We've got Bowser and JPP on the same side. I was wrong there. So this, we'll let this run one more time so you can see it. I'll pull it back and show you where Bowser is. It's a 4-3 look by the Ravens. So he's playing weak side DN, but from a stand-up position. So for whatever reason, we've got JPP and Bowser on the same side. I'll show you the end zone angle so you can see Bowser's number. 
We used to do this with Judon a lot. Stack him, bring him back in the box and stack him. Create this 4-3 look. It's an over front, so we're calling the strength over here. You can see the 3 technique is to the strength, and the 1 or the shade nose is backside. Fantastic job by JPP. Again, physical with the tight end. Dolchitz gets his hands on him, goes inside of the, the other pulling tight end, gets a tackle for loss. Roquan Smith is there. Surprise, surprise. Uh, also, but by that time, JPP had already made a tackle. He gave us three really high-level plays. Again, I thought he wrong-armed one time violently, forcing the ball to go outside. Yeah, so I was right. Uh, it is Bowser. We've, I'm not sure about that call. I've never seen us run this before. Basically, we've kicked Campbell over, head up over to the tight end in a three and a one to the backside with JPP being the weak side five technique, essentially, even though he's head up on a tight end. Dominates Dolchich. Dolchich can't do anything. Sheds him. Makes the tackle on Murray. I don't know about you. It's, it's exciting to see him play like this. I know it's not going to happen every week. Uh, because we have so many talented guys out there. Him, Houston, Owe, Bowser, Ojabo could come back and get some snaps, hopefully. I understand that, you know, the special teams kind of impacts that. But J JPP given us this now, I would say this type of effort three or four times this year in terms of three or four games, I think is pretty substantial, especially the situation, the timing of when we were able to acquire him and we had a real need out there because so many guys were injured and we were waiting on them to return. Let me know what you think of JPP's play in week 13 uh, and what you think of my breakdown if I missed any elements or, or God forbid, missed any plays. I'm trying to shorten the videos and get as many of them out as possible on certain players. The next one that I'll be putting out this morning will be on Kevon Seymour and Daryl Worley. Appreciate you guys' time. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section.